Welcome back, everybody. This Week in America and the Blue Funk Broadcasting Radio Network. Great to have you with us on the program today. Our guest is Dr. Jeffrey Holmes, author of the book Accessible College, a guide to transition students with disability from high school to college. His website is diversitytrainingconsultants.com. The book will guide students, parents, teachers, advisors, administrators, and community members as they begin planning for academic accommodations at the collegiate level. Dr. Holmes has been involved in post-secondary education for over 17 years. He's mentored literally thousands of students to transition to college, degree completion, and careers. And he's with us on This Week in America. Dr. Holmes, welcome to the program. Pleasure to have you with us. Hey, thank you so much, Rick. It's a pleasure to be here today. A lot of ground to cover. It's a very important uh, ground to cover on the program today. I, the name of the book is Accessible College. Let's start off by talking about, uh, discuss the abilities and the disabilities that you address in the book. Well, we cover a number of uh, abilities and uh, disabling conditions that you know many students and many Americans are facing today. Uh, we really don't leave a stone unturned. We cover all intellectual disabilities, physical disabilities, hearing, seeing, uh, learning, of course, and any other physical disabilities that may impact or impede learning uh, in a post-collegiate or post-secondary um, setting. When people are going to make that transition, they figure that I've been a student or my son, daughter has been a student up to this point and their legal rights will just sort of automatically transfer into college. Is it correct to make that assumption or do we really need to do our homework and make sure in fact those, those rights are going to transfer with us? Yeah, we really need to make sure that um, we do our homework prior to uh, starting this kind of quest. Uh, the biggest thing is that you have to do like a checklist uh, to make sure that your student is uh, progressing, learning their particular learning styles, learning about the limitations um, with their learning, but also learning about their strengths. And, you know, basically you can start as early as the eighth grade and continue on until your senior year. And then you set up your accommodations uh, based upon your limitation and based upon institution and your major that you're going into. If somebody says a checklist, that sounds good, but I have no idea how to put together the appropriate checklist. That's actually in the book, right? In Accessible College, you have the checklist and you do go back at a very early age, uh, middle school, and then bring them up. So by the time they get ready for college, they have things pretty well in order. Exactly. What we try to do is to make sure that the, the both the students and the families are taking their own uh, personal self-advocacy and, and looking at how to put together a more or less a you know, instructional package and an academic pathway that will both most benefit the student. Uh, many times what happens is um, the parents and families are leaving it up to the academic advisors and some of the other counselors and whatnot that are at these um, colleges and universities to figure it out for them. Well, by that time, it really is almost too late. Um, you need to start a little bit earlier. Um, I know some parents haven't been able to keep up with records or maybe they find it difficult or challenging. And that's why the purpose of what we put that book together for is how to simplify some things. Because many of these records are really easily obtainable from your, um, your K-12 systems. And you could put together a little folder and actually march um, your student right through the process uh, by figuring out, again, their strengths, their weaknesses. And then once you get their major down and you have a couple of colleges in mind, then you could do that. The book is very affordable. It's called Accessible College, A Guide to Transition Students with Disability from High School to College. It's not only affordable, it's very easy to read. It's laid out so you follow everything sequentially. Mention the checklist there. One thing you talk about is before you even begin the process, you need to get the terms right. Explain that because sometimes we're, we're both thinking the same thing, but we're expressing it differently. Yes, exactly. You know, the um, American Disabilities Act and the Rehabilitation Act in addition to many state laws and educational codes and you know the higher ed reauthorization act there are so many technical terms and jargon that sometimes uh, you know you get caught up in semantics where you know one acronym will mean something in one context in K-12 but it'll mean something entirely different in um, you know getting for department of rehabilitation or if you're using uh, a community college or a university so one thing is to try to get a lot of these terms kind of ironed out, you know, and kind of understand there is a definite difference between the Individual Disabilities Act and the, um, there's also a Handicap Act that most states have. It's kind of outdated in language. 
But that language generally lays out provisions and protections for students with disabilities while they're going through K-12. But as they transition to post-secondary education, so that would be a two-year college, a technical college, a four-year college or a university, or even a graduate school, they begin to have uh, protections under the American with Disabilities Act and the reauthorization of that act. And so you would have to have somewhat of understanding so that as these professionals are throwing terms at you, you know, being the student or the family that's trying to enroll, um, you would begin to understand, you know, kind of what, what those terms mean, try to get the definitions down so when folks are talking to you actually have some, you know, some responsible feedback you can give to them. Um, and that way that can help you a lot better. You're listening to This Week in America. Our website is thisweekinamerica.us. Information there on our guest in the program today, Dr. Jeffrey Holmes. His book is Accessible College, A Guide to Transition Students with Disability from High School to College. His website is diversitytrainingconsultants.com. Again, that link available at our website. There are several themes throughout the, uh, the book, Accessible College. One is preparation and planning ahead. Let's talk about the importance of that. You've alluded to the fact that this really should begin in, in like middle school, but how important is it to get everything laid out so you make that smooth transition with, with, with no mistakes? Yeah, you know what? It is it's so critical and important. Um, you know, we have, for example, uh, student athletes who do years of prepar- preparatory work to prepare themselves, you know, in middle schools and junior, junior high schools, and then through high school process. And then they wind up, you know, signing a, a full ride scholarship or letter of intent to these four year college universities. Um, they have very strict rules in terms of uh, adhering to uh, NCAA guidelines or NAIA guidelines, depending on what, you know, um, system they're going into. Right. And they, they, they have a track that they're following. Other students, um, general population students, you know, pretty much have a track that they follow. You know, they have to finish, you know, X amount of core courses. They have to make sure they have a substantial GPA. They have to fill out, you know, applications to schools. They have to get letters of recommendation, things like that. But for those students uh, that may have disabling conditions, there's another step in that process that often goes really underdressed um, and it's not really uh, served uh, well. And a lot of it has to do with the self-advocacy piece. And that is because usually those families don't start early enough in the process to get accommodations. So, for example, uh, you know, a general education student can pretty much go to a college, you know, register for their classes, show up for class that day and, and be fine. Just go ahead and enroll and start taking classes. Well, if a student has a, a challenge with reading, for example, they might be blind or somehow visually impaired. Um, if there is no alternative text or Braille print available or something to allow them to access the curriculum, um, they're at a disadvantage the first day of class. And so the thing that they have to do, and those individuals with disabilities have to get their accommodations and their accessible technology in place first before they even come on the campus to make sure that it's there the first day of class. And then also run a series of tests to make sure they have everything they need so that basically all the bridges to the curriculum are already there so that they can succeed in class on the first day. It's and so, it's so, yeah, it's so difficult to make that transition anyway. And in the book, Accessible College, you talk about that, having everything in place from day one. If I'm thinking I'm adaptable, once I get there, if something needs to be taken care of, I can take care of it. And I get the impression from what you're saying, you're going to be behind the eight ball, like right off the bat. Yeah, you know, and one of the things to understand is that a lot of these uh, staffs at many of these four-year colleges and universities, uh, they're not large staffs but they're serving a great mass of students that have disabling conditions. And so it really helps them if people can give them some lead time to get accommodations set up and to get, you know, auxiliary aids and accessible technology in place uh, for these students. You know, in other words, the, the procrastination really is a, is a true learning killer. And if we could somehow, um, you know, get uh, families uh, with students with disabling conditions, not necessarily more motivated because they're already motivated enough, but get them the information that they need to give them the time uh, to start early, you know, and, and get these things in place. It makes the transition a lot smoother and a lot better for everyone. Another potential problem, and Dr. Jeffrey Holmes is our guest on the program, the book Accessible College, a guide to transition students with disability from high school to college. 
His website, diversitytrainingconsultants.com. Information at, at our website this week in America.us. So often, parents probably have the tendency, going through middle school and high school, to try to work at, to look out for their, their child, the student. Uh, if something needs to be addressed, I can go ahead and do that for you. The school system knows you. You've been there for six, seven, eight years, quite possibly. I know the teacher that just lives down the street. Going off to college and you talk about self-advocacy, advocacy, you're pretty much there by yourself, you as the student. Is that a problem? Suddenly you're the one that has to speak up for yourself. Yeah, exactly. You know, and, you know, this, this self-advocacy, I think, translates over across most of our students that go away to college or even stay at home for college. It's really what it is, is learning how to speak about your personal needs um, and what you're going to need to be successful at that institution. You know, many times uh, our students with disabling conditions have had everybody be their advocate. So they've had their teacher be their right. advocate. They've had a community person be their advocate, their family member be their advocate. But they have never had an opportunity to do that. And what we try to encourage is doing during the senior and uh, junior years is for the student to begin to start that process so that when they are on their own or they are in an environment where that favorite teacher or that favorite parent or whoever they've built their relationship with that has been their advocate the whole time is not there, they feel comfortable and confident enough to say, hey, these are types of things that I need to learn and these are types of accommodations that have worked for me in the past. Um, is there any way that we can you know, work together to figure out the best learning style and environment for me to allow me to be successful in this college course? And you know, again, once that lesson is learned, it makes it a lot easier on them. And, and surely enough, whatever college you're going to is to make sure that you have um, contacts with some community advocacy groups out in the community of that particular institution that you plan on attending, because that always helps as well, just to build those extra relationships and networks. One of the interesting things that you do in the book, Accessible College, a self-quiz where you evaluate your readiness for college. And I'm thinking, okay, my goal has always been to go to Stanford. And you take this self-quiz and you sort of find out exactly where you should go. Maybe you can go right now. Maybe you need to do something in the interim. Maybe that's, that's not for you. How important is it to be realistic about what your aspirations are for education? Yeah, it's very important to be realistic. Um, one of the other aspects that I always try to do is try to make sure that um, students and families really understand um, the demands of a particular academic program or of an institution um, and to really get a handle on that. You know, if the student is capable um, and has capacity uh, both academically, intellectually, and also the physical stamina to uh, go to some of the, whatever the university is, wherever the program is, then by all means, you know, apply and don't hold back. But the other aspect of that is, is that sometimes students may need to start off at a community college, taking a couple of classes at a time. Um, as we know that many of our nation's uh, kids that are coming out of high school um, are testing into developmental English and math, but not just that, but they're also testing the other developmental classes as well. They're not ready for college yet, per se, um, based on their um, academic interest exams. So um, the thing is, is to, again, you know, weigh out those academic skills early, you know, do a quick assessment on learning styles and also, you know, how that jives with the major and uh, to make sure that, you know, this is a reasonable direction, you know, that the person can succeed in. And that's what it's all about, the student's individual success. Talk about verification of disability. I would assume each school has a different procedure to state what the disability is uh, and deal from it uh, from that uh, aspect. How do you go about yeah, verifying? Yeah, in fact, the, yeah, the verification for disability um, pretty much varies from state to state uh, because the laws are different. The only thing, of course, that it governs everyone is, of course, the, um, any federal laws or statutes. Um, the uh, other challenge is, is to make sure that it comes from a clinician. That's really the biggest issue, is to make sure that any documentation on the limitation or disabling condition comes from a clinician that is skilled in that area that kind of defines and talks about, you know, this is the limitation and then this is the effect it has on this particular individual. How difficult that, is it and how important is it to build a relationship with your, with your professors? Should you talk to each and have a special relationship with them? Yeah, I encourage all students, whether they have disabling conditions or not, to make sure that they build these relationships with professors. Um, you know, because studies always show that, you know, the best students actually have better relationships with the faculty and staff at the institution. 
and the more relationships that they build, you know, it's called uh, student engagement. Um, the more the student is engaged at the college or even at the high school, uh, the better that they have a chance of succeeding and not only just succeeding, but succeeding well. And after that, because uh, you also need referrals and reference letters for job placement or graduate school or what have you. So all those relationship building uh, skills help. So it is important to build those relationships early on. The book is Accessible College, a guide to transition students with disability from high school to college. Dr. Jeffrey Holmes, our guest on This Week in America. His website is diversitytrainingconsultants.com. Of course, information at our website, thisweekinamerica.us. A couple minutes left in the program. Let's talk about what you've seen. I mentioned your years of experience in dealing with uh, with abilities, disabilities, post-secondary education. Are we seeing universities, the institutions that have responsibility in this equation as well, are we seeing them step up? Oh, yes. Quite frankly, yes. Um, even in this economic downturn, uh, one really great thing about um, these support services that a lot of these universities and four-year colleges and two-year colleges, junior colleges, community colleges offer is uh, they still have maintained their support services in spite of the economic downturn, state budget cuts and whatnot, um, because, it, you know, they're entitled to. Um, you know, every student that has a disabling condition that's documented and verified, you know, pretty much has the right to have equal and accessible education. And, you know, the universities and colleges, again, these support programs and their staffs are wonderful, you know, and they're such great people uh, to work with. I, I, you know, am in the field as well. Um, and we really do care about the, each individual student. And it, there is no one size fits all. It actually really is truly um, an individualized education plan or educational planning uh, that is done based on the class, based on the limitation, and then based on the learning objectives that are on file with the university. So those are, those are some really key things. Just in wrapping up, and we've touched on it a couple of times, but if we have people, that advisors in high school that are working with us, if we have people in college that we think we can count on, you can sort of count on them, but you really need to count on yourself. I assume these people, not just looking out for you, you or your child, but looking out for a number of people as well, you really need to take it upon yourself to make sure everything is done appropriately. Yes, and this is where the separation comes uh, from K-12. Using K-12, I mean, there is so much oversight. Um, you have parents that are involved in developing an IEP, individual education plan. You have teachers involved. You have administrators involved. You have specialized teachers that are involved. Of course, the, the families and then, of course, the student. Well, when you move off to college, it's a totally different uh, type of interactive process. Um, and the student really is, has the burden of following up on all of their accommodations, on all of their classes, and making sure they communicate with the university and the office that services uh, individuals with disabilities to make sure their accommodations are set up and make sure the technology is in place to also help them. The book is an important roadmap. It's very easy to read. It's all sequential. You can follow it all the way through Accessible College. A Guide to Transition Students with Disability from High School to College. Our guest on the program has been Dr. Jeffrey Holmes. The website is diversitytrainingconsultants.com. Dr. Holmes, thank you so much for joining us on the program today. A very important book. We'll have you back on the show. Hey, Rick, thank you so much. I appreciate it. You're welcome. You have a wonderful day. Appreciate thank you, it. you too. And, of course, if you can't remember, diversitytrainingconsultants.com or the name of the book, go to our website thisweekinamerica.us, and the information will be there for you. You're listening to This Week in America on the Blue Funk Broadcasting Radio Network.